All right, I'm gonna do a quick unboxing of this guy and then we'll be taking it down to the rifle range and shooting some groups with it and hopefully four and 500 yards. This is a CV Life 5 to 25 by 56. So up to 25X magnification, you got a 56 millimeter front lens here. Get your screen wipe. This thing's very well packaged here. Got your sunshade here and quite heavy. This guy comes in right around, uh, if I remember correctly, 30 ounces. I'll post it on the screen. So she's a hefty boy, 13.7 inches long. But yeah, this is a big boy for uh, shooting long range. Don't mind me, I don't know how rubber bands work. <laughs> um, but you know, with that being able to go down to 5x magnification, you could use this thing as close as 20 yards as well. But that 25x is going to help you out, you know, real nice, clear out to a thousand yards and beyond, no problem. Comes with these scope caps, flip up. This one's turned here, but easily rectified under there. I think there's the diopter. Yep, there it is. So you got your fast focus diopter there. So you can set it for your specific eyesight, get it focused perfectly for you there. As you can see there, first focal plane reticle, which basically you have first focal plane and second focal plane. This one is a first focal plane. So all that means basically is the reticle zooms in and out as you zoom the scope in and out. Uh, second focal plane does not change the reticle at all as you zoom in and out. So that moves nicely there, nice and smooth. Decent little force feedback, but not super stiff, not super loose. I don't feel any binds or anything on it there. This guy being a big old 34 millimeter tube, you have more range of adjustment with your turrets here. Um, 55 MOA adjustment in either direction uh, from centered. So a total of 110 uh, MOA adjustment, windage and elevation thanks in part to that big 34 millimeter tube there got the christmas tree reticle for windage and elevation holds and it also has an illuminated reticle so pretty much the entire reticle is illuminated i'll definitely be showing you that in this video in some low light conditions which is what it's for um so you got your parallax adjustment here from all the way down to 15 yards i think i've seen in there clear up to infinity you even got a 500 yard setting there so that's that there nice and smooth in the operation and then over here is the adjustments for your illuminated reticle i believe in in between each one of those numbers is off so you got uh five or six different brightness settings yep goes to six there so in between each one of those if you line it up with your little mark there is going to be off and you got six different settings of brightness there for that obviously your battery is going to go under the cap there for that nice thought out collar instructions here give you some walkthroughs there's a reticle i probably would have had it up on the screen by now they make this in both an moa or mil dot adjustments uh, so each click is a quarter moa click if you have the moa version or if you have the mil dot version each click is one tenth mil I'll put a link in the description for both versions and one year manufacturer warranty. You got multi coated lens, uh, nitrogen purged, shock proof, waterproof, fog proof, and they advertise this as being able to handle 1000 G's of recoil shock, which, um, on the listing for this that I have linked in the description, it says compatible with 308 and 30-06. Uh, but per my research, and I don't want to put words in their mouth or quote them for anything they did not say, uh, but 1,000 Gs of recoil, that's like 300 win mag territory and some of the 338s. So 308 and 30-06 on a medium weight hunting rifle, that's pushing around 800 Gs of recoil shock. So the 1,000 Gs that they're quoting on this... Like I said, about 300 wind mag or some of the 338s there. And lastly, before we head down to the range, this has a uh, lockable turret for the windage here. 
So you can see I just popped it up there. Okay, so you pop it up so you can make your adjustments. And then when you're done, you can lock it back down and then that locks it so you don't have to worry about bumping it or anything like that, making uh, unintentional adjustments there. And then the top here, it is a zero stop turret, okay? So that goes just a little bit beyond um, zero reset, uh, zero resettable turret like I've shown on some of their other scopes. So your standard zero reset, you could be out here on any one of these numbers off of zero, uh, you know, to get your 100 or 200 yard zero. You could be anywhere out here. So at that point, if you shoot, you know, double, triple, quadruple the ranges and you want to make quick and precise adjustments on your um, elevation turret there, it's a lot easier to do it from zero instead of starting on some random and a half number, okay? So that's the whole point of a re-zeroable turret. But this goes a step further and this is a zero stop turret. So it gives you that same function of being able to uh, put it back down to zero while maintaining whatever distance you sighted it in for and keeping sighted in for that range. But it'll allow you to do it quickly and without going beyond zero. So instead of having to look at your numbers here and make sure you get it perfectly lined up on zero, what you can do is just go back. It's got a stop, hence the name zero stop. So I'm gonna shut up here and you should be able to hear this actually hitting the stop. Okay, you hear it? So it stops on zero there. So let's say you have a hundred yard zero, you turn it way up, you're shooting a thousand yards, but you need to come back to your original 100 yard zero real quick for some reason, you know, could be a hunting scenario. You could be eyeing something a thousand yards out and then all of a sudden, you know, your trophy deer or moose or whatever walks out right in front of you at a uh, hundred yards or 200 yards or whatever you have your rifle zeroed for. You can just very quickly turn it back to zero and it's going to stop right on zero for you there. But anyways, that's a nice extra little feature there. You get a zero stop and that is adjustable pretty much in the same mannerisms that a zero reset is. You just take your cap off here and I'm going to show you guys this real quick just so you know how it works. There's three screws I got to loosen real quick. I just had it off. There we go. You might have to turn it back and forth just a little bit, but she'll pop off there. Okay. And it's going to be difficult with the lighting, but there's your little stop ring. Get this situated to where hopefully you guys can see it. There we go. That's decent lighting. So you see that little nub sticking up there on the brass, and then you have a matching nub on your black stop ring here. So it just hits that and stops. So when you go to zero, let's say you go all the way out here for a, a 200 yard zero. So you're that many clicks up so that you're zeroed at 200 yards. And then your cap is going to be on some oddball number because of that. Then what you do is you loosen this ring the same way you loosen this cap to be able to take it off. You loosen the ring and then you'll be able to slide that ring back on that stop there without it clicking, without it changing your zero. And then you'll snug it back down once it's on that stop and then align your cap here for the zero to line up there. You know, roughly like so. And then tighten your cap back down all three screws. And now it still says zero, um, whether you have it zeroed for 100 yards, 200 yards, 300 yards, whatever. And I almost forgot, guys, they also include this little throw lever if you want to install that for your zoom. And they send it with these batteries here for the illumination. All right, there she is all mounted up on my 25-06. It's a shawl barrel, Boyd stock. Put a link in the description if you want to check out the review video on this. Also got a 500-yard video. I'll link to that in the description as well. But she's all mounted up, ready to go. So I'll get the work on zeroing it, and then we'll reach out there probably four or 500 yards back there. I shoot this thing 500 all the time, so... All right, pretty much got it zeroed using this cheap stuff. This does not shoot very well out of my rifle. I already knew that when I did a, a grouping test out of like four or five different brands of ammo, different types. Uh, now we're out there at 400. I'm hoping those will get it done. 
there's 400 yards right there so those are like two some inches at 100 four some inches at 200 yards so out there at 400 it's going to be like a minimum eight or nine inch group if not worse so that is a 20 inch plate though but like i said uh i couldn't get the zero perfect i was just shooting stuff down here in the dirt because i don't have any paper with me today um my target stand got ruined i need to get a new one Anyways, we'll send these down at 400. Hopefully they're good enough to do it. If I'm not, if not, I'll uh, switch those Remingtons over there. They shoot quite a bit better than those PPU. Sorry about the uh, camera here, guys. It, for my first group, the camera, for some reason, went out of focus. Uh, but I do shoot a second group that is in focus. Well, oh, of course we're out of focus now. Sorry about that. It was focused when I started. Great. It's always something, man. I swear. So we got two hits on the plate. The very first one was high left, but it still hit the plate. Second one was a little bit lower and a little more centralized, but it was clearly averaging off to the left side of the plate. Like I said, I didn't have it perfectly zeroed because I don't got any paper down here to perfect the zero. I was literally just shooting crap in the dirt on the mounds. And then the other two, they missed off to the left side. Like I said, that's going to be 8 or 9 inch group down there with those at best. And so with that 8 or 9 inch group, or if it was worse, I didn't see quite how far off to the left I missed. We were averaging left there, so 2 hit and 2 were off to the left. So and my group down there was somewhere between 9 and 12 inches overall, which is about what I expected. Because like I said, it, it does not like those bullets. But uh, let me put a few of those Remingtons down there and see what happens. Hopefully it'll stay focused for you guys this time too. Remington hit high right on the plate, so let's see where the next one's hit. Still Remington. That one's pretty much dead center. I think you guys can see it. The Remington weren't the most accurate for me either, but they're definitely better than those PPUs. I had the best luck with Hornady ammunition, at least in my rifle. Pretty centralized, but a few inches higher. And here's one more. And just about the same spot there all right so down here at 400 yards that's where we were shooting from obviously come check out our results close up so like I said and hopefully you saw in the footage although I think it went blurry for you guys on the PPU I got one two and then three four off to the side and like I said I was expecting at least a nine inch group down here and that looks about what we shot um, then I switched to the Remingtons for you, and I, I don't know the exact order, but these are the four here. Um, now when I did my accuracy video testing out different loads in that gun, the Remington were better than the PPU, but not much better. And so if the PPU didn't shoot off to the left, every single one of those would have been on the plate too. Um, so the, the Remington shot a little better, but not a whole lot. It was just more centralized because when you switch brands of ammunition, your point of impact changes. That's why you're supposed to pick a bullet and stick to it, but I still got those to use up. So it's basically what I was doing today, using them up. Now with the Hornady stuff that my gun really likes, I can shoot fist size groups down here at 400 yards. Like I said, I shoot that thing 500 yards, no problem, which I mean, right there's 450. 
right there's the 500 mount clear the back's 540 and uh, I even got a headshot back there on the very first try at 540 basically um, so I know the rifle will do it I think I'm done wasting three dollars per shot very hard to find ammo so uh, that'll wrap it up the shooting portion of this video here but I will also link that um, not only the review video of the rifle the 500 yard video of the rifle which by the way was another CV life scope and it was a much more affordable scope at that that I was shooting 500 yards and got that headshot on. Um, crap, I'll, I'll put a link in the description of that scope review as well if you want to check that out. Um, this scope here is a definitely a much better scope, um, but I still managed with a uh, much more uh, budget-minded scope of theirs. And then I'll also throw up that video for you guys, the accuracy test out of that rifle if you want to see. Uh, like I said, this is about what I expected down here with the PPU and the Remington because my rifle didn't like those a whole lot. I liked the Remington a little better, uh, but it really liked the Hornady loads. I'll put a link in the description of that video as well if you want to check it out. Now I was just uh, about to comment on the clarity of the glass and I was having a little bit of difficulty. As you can see, the sun's been in our face all day. Um, crystal clear glass and whatnot out several hundred yards and when the magnification's not all the way up. Uh, but once I get to 20, between 20 and 25 up there, um, it was a little hazy, I guess. So I threw the sunshade on here, and this, that actually did help. It made it a lot better. And I can get it crystal clear for my eye, which I have horrible high eyes, by the way. I actually have an appointment in two days to go get glasses finally because I've been putting it off all my life. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not. Um, but putting the sunshade on there definitely helped. But what I'm finding is for my parallax setting up here, if I have it on the actual distance I'm looking at, I can tweak it with the diopter back here and get it to look pretty good, but it's still not quite 100% for me. I actually have to tweak with the uh, parallax setting here uh, a little bit, and then I can get it crystal clear for myself, but then it ends up being a little bit off from the distance that I'm shooting, like out there at 500 with my magnification all the way up and with the diopter set as best as I can get it. Instead of the, my uh, parallax setting being set on... Uh, 500 I got to bring it down to like three or something and then I got a crystal clear image for me So that could be different for everybody with obviously everyone has different eyesight But I just wanted to mention that I do have to tweak it a little bit um, I mean, that's a common thing when you get uh, into the higher magnification Usually when you zoom in all the way on, on a powerful scope at least in the budget level scopes like these Usually you will have to tweak it a little bit. Now, if you want to go spend, you know, two grand on a scope, I'm sure you won't have that issue. But I was able to correct it. I just had to, to mess with the diopter slightly and the parallax setting up here. And then I can get it crystal clear for myself. But it ends up, for me, it ends up putting the parallax setting a little bit off from the actual distance of what I'm shooting. Um, but as you saw out there, 400 yards, it's not affecting me being able to hit my target at all. So I do believe it's still uh, remaining parallax free for me. Uh, more importantly than actually hitting the target, it was grouping the size of groups that I should have been getting down there. So, And again, the purpose of the sunshade, most people know, if you're shooting in the sun like this, I'm like, I'm squinting like crazy because it's so bright, I'm having a hard time seeing. Um, you know, usually that will give you distorted uh, vision through there, a little bit of haziness. So putting the sunshade on there helps knock some of that out, but it doesn't completely eliminate it. So if it was earlier in the day and the sun was straight above us instead of out there blinding us like it is right now, um, I, I would wager it would probably be even better. But I can get it crystal clear. I just got to mess with the diopter and the parallax a little bit. And again, that's with the magnification all the way up above 20. Uh, below 20, I'm not having that issue. Eye relief on this scope is about 3 and 3 quarters inch. Field of view at 100 yards, which this is an image I'm looking at 100 yards through the scope. Uh, field of view on minimum magnification 5x is 23 feet. And here we are at the same 100 yards, but on maximum uh, magnification 25x, in which your field of view at 100 yards is 4.6 feet. Now here we are at 400 yards of the target I was just shooting, and you see how it looks just a little hazy now. These images were taken without the sunshade on. Um, so that's kind of what I was talking about. It's not too bad at all. And again, the camera is not helping it at all. It looks better in person than it does through the camera. Uh, but here's an image of... The 400 yard target we were shooting on the minimum magnification of 5x and now the same target down there at 400 yards on maximum magnification 25x and keep in mind again 
looks better in person to the naked eye than it does through my camera here trying to get this photo for you guys. And here I held the camera in the wrong position intentionally so it would, the scope would black out like that so you guys could get a kind of a good idea of what that reticle looks like and what it looks like illuminated there. And again, this is by no means a perfect photo. It's very hard to get uh, images through the scope with the camera. And then finally here is what it looks like in broad daylight with uh, the illumination up all the way on the highest, set, highest setting. Uh, so it's got plenty of brightness for broad daylight. You know, the, the idea behind the illuminated reticle is to help you out in low light, but this thing's plenty bright in broad daylight. So it's definitely got you covered in low light. You're going to have to turn it down, matter of fact, or it's going to be too bright in low light conditions. Anyways, that's the best I could do with the camera. It looks more clear and crisp in person, and I can see every single one of those windage and elevation hold marks, no problem. At the end of the day, guys, you have to remember this is a $300 scope competing with $1,500 scopes. You can buy absolute perfection if you want to spend that much, but this is still going to be able to get you out to 1,000 yards, no problem. And I actually hope within the next couple months, uh, it's been a goal of mine, to take this rifle out to a thousand yards been waiting for the weather to cool down i have a place i can go do that so uh, hopefully here in a couple months you'll actually see me take this rifle with this very scope on here uh, out to a thousand yards and be getting good hits out there at a thousand yards no problem so stay tuned for that if you want to check that out uh, again there'll be a link in the description of the scope if you want to go check it out i also got links in the description of other products i use in my videos like my shooting bag here still targets and more Thanks for watching as always, and I hope to catch you on the next one.